Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, we'll be seeing how to create a simple HTTPS web server using C Sharp. First of all, let's see how HTTPS actually works behind the hood. Okay, so I'll be showing you a brief introduction on how this thing actually works. Then we'll start with creating a project on Visual Studio and then we can create our own HTTPS web server. Keep in mind, this is actually a very simple server. And moreover, dealing with SSL is actually kind of complicated and tedious because there are too many versions of SSL and TLS involved and many algorithms involved. So we'll be using something called SSL stream in C sharp rather than implementing everything that does the SSL handshake for us. So let's get started with the introduction to HTTPS. So let's see how SSL works. First, the client creates a TCP socket with the server which involves normal TCP handshake and then the client sends out a client hello message which will have all the information related to the supported ciphers, random numbers, session ID and the SNI. SNI stands for server name identification and then the server responds back with a server hello message which will say the selected cipher and the algorithms and the session ID and other things. Server will be leaving the SNI empty. Uh, I will explain what SNI is in a moment. Once the handshake is completed, a session key is derived by the client and the server. This session key is a symmetry key which will be used for encrypting all the payloads thereafter during that session. So the server name identification is nothing, is a value that is set by the client in the client hello message and its value will be equivalent to the domain name that the user is trying to access or the client is trying to access so that the server can serve the certificate corresponding to the domain that is requested by the user. This comes in handy when a server serves multiple websites. For example, you can host multiple websites like a.com and b.com on a single server. In that scenario, both the websites will be having two different certificates and the server doesn't know which certificate to serve. This is the place where SNI comes in handy. So the SNI field is set by the client in the client hello message so that the server knows which certificate to serve. In TLS 1.3, all messages after server hello is encrypted that is the reason why we don't get to see the certificate message when we do a Wireshark capture. If you are going for a version that is below 1.3, you will be able to see the certificate message and the server certificates in a Wireshark capture as a plain message. Now here is a sample Wireshark capture of the TCP handshake and the SSL handshake. There is a SYN which is sent from the client to the server, then it's followed by a SYN act from the server and then it's followed by an acknowledgement from the client to the server that actually completes a TCP handshake and a TCP socket is created between the server and the client. Now the client starts the TLS or the SSL handshake by sending out a client hello message followed by a server hello message from the server side. Once they agree upon things, they generate a session key and you can see anything afterwards will be shown as application data which is just encrypted payload which uses the protocol HTTP but no payload will be visible if you do the capture that is the reason why we say SSL is safe and secure from the man in the middle attack unless the private key is compromised. So let's get started with the coding part. Now that you have an idea how HTTPS works underneath the hood let's get started with the coding of our basic HTTPS web server. Here we can see a folder in my D drive called SSL server and inside which there are two other directories one is certs and another one is www okay the www will be serving as the root folder for the web browser that means all the html pages for example all the pages that the user requests like index.html about.html or images or it could be a json like here i have a json file okay so i have opened it in vs code you can see that uh, here I have the structure inside the www folder. I have a folder images inside which I have this image. Then I have a JSON data inside another folder called something. And then I have an about page. Then I have an index.html. So this is the basic structure of the root directory. And inside the search folder, I have one certificate file which will be serving as the certificate or the SSL certificate. And for every SSL certificate, there will be a corresponding private key. And this will be the corresponding private key for the certificate. These certificates are generated by me. It's a self-signed certificate. So you will be facing some browser warnings like this certificate is not secure or this website is not secure, so and so. But that's okay. We are doing a project which is for learning HTTPS. That should be fine. 
Now let's see how to create an SSL certificate for our server. You can follow these steps to create your own self-signed certificate. First we start by creating a certificate authority. Then we create our SSL certificate with the help of the certificate authority that we just created. And at the end we will have two files. One is server.cert and server.key. The server.key will be the private key of the certificate and server.cert will be the public key and these two things will be essential for an HTTPS server to work because when a client connects the server have to serve the certificate and this certificate and this private key will be used for that purpose. I'll be putting these commands in the description so that you can go ahead and copy paste it and use it directly. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.